Hello, and welcome to Make It For Less, where we make things for the lowest possible price so you can follow along and make them yourself. Today, we are going to be making this device to track how many boxes of cereal you have left so you never run out again. For this project, we are going to use two ESP8266 microcontrollers, three 5mm LEDs, one 220 ohm resistor, two IR sensors, one AA battery holder, some wire, and some whiteboard tape. With all of those pieces together, this project is going to come in just under $10. As always, this video is just going to discuss the construction of the project, as well as any specific lines in the code you might need to update. A full code review for this project can be found at the link in the description. Without further ado, let's get going. For this project, we are going to need to do some wireless communication. There are a few ways we could go about that, but the least expensive and best way I know of is using the ESP8266. If you have never seen or worked with an ESP8266 before, you are in for a treat. They work just like any other Arduino microcontroller you may have seen, but are faster and can communicate wirelessly with each other directly or connect to the internet with no additional parts. There are going to be two parts to this project, a sender and a receiver. Before we start building either though, we need to code them up, since it will be more difficult after they have been assembled. Grab one of the ESPs. This will be the ESP that goes in the receiver. In order to get our wireless communication working later, we need to get something called the MAC address of the ESP. Basically, it is just a unique identifier so the other ESPs know where to send their data. Upload the code found in the description and the MAC address for the ESP will be printed to the serial monitor. Save this somewhere, and preferably put a label on the ESP, so you know which one you have the MAC address for. Now that we know the MAC address for our receiver, we can make the changes we need to in the sender code. Fill in the MAC address variable at the top. That's all that's needed for the code changes, and you can upload the program to the other ESP8266. With that out of the way, we can move on to the building. The sender, in a shocking turn of events, will send data out. We will use these to track how much serial we have left. The sender is relatively simple and only needs a few parts. For it, we will need one ESP8266, two IR distance sensors, a battery holder, and some wires to bring it all together. Here's the wiring diagram for the sender. Feel free to pause here and get it all connected. Once the wiring is done, you can optionally get the files to 3D print these housings that hold all the pieces together. They are, however, not necessary, and you can use whatever method you want to get the sensors where they need to be. If you do choose to 3D print everything, you will need to hot glue the components into the housing and use a soldering iron or something else to make holes for the sensors once they are in place. When setting everything up, you'll want to adjust these potentiometers with the screwdriver. They change the sensitivity of the sensors, and you want to get it setting just right so that the sensor can tell when something is in front of it or not. As an optional step, I like to crunch these little LEDs that come on the sensor boards. This keeps you from seeing the annoying light, as well as reduces the power use of the sensor. Now onto the receiver, which you may have guessed, receives the data, and displays the quantities using some LEDs. The receiver has even less parts than the sender. It is just the ESP, some LEDs, a resistor, and a little bit of wire. Here is the wiring diagram for the receiver. Feel free to pause and get everything connected. The receiver also has an optional 3D print, but once again, if you don't have a 3D printer or want to avoid the hassle, the pieces can be held together however you like. This thin part in the 3D print is intended for letting the LED light through. You can hot glue the LEDs behind it, and then hot glue the ESP on the other side. Make sure you have it in an orientation and position that you can still plug in the USB. On the other side, you can write with a sharpie or get some whiteboard tape so you can change what you are tracking in the future. Provided you already built your sender, all you need to do is plug in the receiver and put something into the sender. You may notice that things don't change right away, and there's a good reason for that. In order to make the batteries last for as long as possible, the senders are in sleep mode most of the time. They only wake up briefly every half hour to check that there's still serial. This means that the lights on the receiver might not change for a while, but eventually everything will work as intended. The receiver lights will be in one of three states. 
Green means you are good to go and have two boxes in your sender. Yellow means you only have one, and red means you have none. Since we are going to be using wireless communication, we can put our sender anywhere, into the cabinet, into the bread box, or even into the fridge. This is where this project really shines, as you can tell from a distance without going through your cabinets, what you have and what you need. Now that everything is set up, you can go about things just the same way you always have, but you will always know if you're out of cereal. Thanks for watching! I hope you enjoyed following along and try to make it for less. The links to all the parts I used in this video will be in the description, along with links to the code overview on my second channel. If you built one of these yourself or have any questions, let me know about it in the comments below. If you liked, please consider leaving a like, and if you want to see more like this in the future, hit subscribe. Have a good one, and I'll see you next time on Make It For Less.